I'm Mike Sokol and welcome to the No Shock Zone. Today I'm going to show you how to test and properly neutral ground bond an inverter generator such as a Honda EU3000. So you'll see over here I do have a standard uh, Honda EU3000 inverter generator and it has something that's called an open neutral or a floating neutral. So what we're going to do is go ahead and start this up and show you how to test for this. So right now, I have a Progressive Industries EMS-30 surge protector, which tests for all kinds of improper voltage conditions and will shut off power going to your RV and protect it. However, if you have one of these and you hook it onto any of these modern inverter generators, because they have a floating neutral, this will detect and shut off the power. So if you look at it right now, it's saying E error 2. So we look at the chart here, it says open ground. Okay, let's go ahead and show you how to test for that. So here I have a standard three light tester that you could buy at any big box department store for less than $5. It has two amber lights and a red light. If you look on the chart, it'll tell you that you really need to have two amber lights on and no red light on to have a proper hot neutral ground condition. So what I'm gonna do is take this and just plug it right into this generator in any of the unused Edison outlets. We are seeing right now a single amber light in the middle which says open ground. Actually, that's really an open unbonded neutral, but that's okay, that's what it's reporting. And again, this thing, our, our EMS 30, is not going to allow any power through because it does not like that condition. However, I developed this and it's a very simple product that you can now buy from Progressive Industries. All it is is a neutral ground bonding plug. If you plug this into any unused Edison outlet on your generator, you can see I immediately have two amber lights and no red lights, which says we have a proper voltage condition right now. The EMS-30 will wait for about 15 seconds so that it knows that you have a stable condition. And then you'll hear the relay click in, which it just did. And now you'll see the E0 command, which tells us everything is just fine. If we go back up to the top and pull our neutral grounding plug, all of a sudden we'll see this is reporting an open ground, and this is reporting an open ground and stopping the current from getting through. So, you do not need to leave your three light detector plugged in. That's just for illustrations, but you will just need a grounding plug and plugged into any of the receptacles on your generator. If you have a generator that when you plug this in first and you do get the proper two amber lights and no red light, then the generator is already neutral ground bonded. Most generators over 5,000 watts and most contractor generators are already neutral ground bonded, whereas most inverter generators from Honda and Yamaha are not. And if you look over to the side here, my Honda old EX1000 has exactly the same problem. It has a floating neutral. All it needs is one of these plugs plugged into the one receptacle and then the other one will be properly neutral ground bonded for any sensitive electronic equipment. Now neutral ground bonding is not absolutely required on any electrical system except if you have sensitive electronics for instance many furnace igniters will not fire up if you don't have a properly neutral ground bonded system and when you're RV is plugged into a shore power connector or your home power, it should be getting that neutral ground bond from that. So it needs to get it from somewhere. In this case, we're doing it from our portable generator. And if you had an RV with a built-in generator, you would in fact have this neutral ground bond as part of the generator transfer switch. I'm Mike Sokol, and thanks for watching the No Shock Zone.